Now it is my honor to introduce an outstanding American leader, a man who has served this country with great distinction. Tom Shannon spent over 30 years in the US Foreign Service, most recently as Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs in the Department of State from 2016 to 2018. He previously served as counselor and senior advisor to the Secretary of State, following a four-year term as ambassador to Brazil. Shannon served as assistant secretary of state for Western Hemisphere Affairs and a special assistant to the president and senior director at the National Security Council, among other senior roles across the region. When he left the State Department, Tom held the rank of career ambassador making him the highest ranking member of the US Foreign Service. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the co-chair of the Inter-American Dialogue and Senior International Policy Advisor at Arnold and Porter, Ambassador Tom Shannon. Thank you very much, Patty, for your very kind words. Um, and thank you to all of you for being here tonight. Tonight's gala is a moment to celebrate <clears throat> the Inter-American Dialogue. It's a moment to celebrate the values and the purpose of the dialogue. And it is a moment to commit ourselves anew to the vision of the Americas that is built on engagement, understanding, and the democratic principles and practices that define our open societies. It's also a moment to acknowledge and thank those who have played such an important role in the work and the success of the dialogue. Tonight, it is my great honor to recognize the work of dialogue president, Michael Shifter. As you know, and as many have said tonight, Michael will be stepping down from the presidency of the dialogue after 12 years as its leader. There's some dispute as to whether it's 11 or 12, <laughs> but it's the 12th year, so we're saying 12. And 28 years as a member of the core team that has guided the dialogue across three decades. Few people in this town <clears throat> can match Michael's deep knowledge and understanding of the Americas. Few people can match his experience working on some of the most important policy and political issues <clears throat> that have faced our hemisphere. During his extraordinary professional life, Michael has worked for the Ford Foundation in Chile and Peru. He has worked for the Inter-American Foundation in Brazil. He has worked for the National Endowment of Democracy, and he has been associated with the Wilson Center Latin America Program and Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service. He has excelled in all of these instances, but he has left his greatest and most indelible mark at the dialogue. The dialogue has been blessed with great leadership over time, with each leader being a match for their moment. But it is safe to say that Michael was asked to carry the dialogue across an especially challenging and difficult period. Michael led the dialogue during a time defined by political turmoil and change in the region and the world, by increasing polarization and partisanship, by the globalization of, America, of the Americas and especially the rise of China as a major trading power, by the emergence of global challenges such as climate change that required a global response, by the inward turn of the United States as its own people debated its purpose in the world, and by a pandemic that fragmented a region and laid bare the inequities and inequalities that underlie all of our societies. During such a consequential time, Michael understood the continuing importance and relevance of the Inter-American Dialogue. He understood its importance as a platform for engagement and understanding. He understood its importance as a promoter and curator of the best analytical research on the problems and challenges facing the Americas, and of the best policy responses to these problems and challenges. Through his hard work and that of the extraordinary staff that he built and mentored, Michael ensured that the dialogue would be a meaningful and respected voice in Washington and in our hemisphere. When Michael came to me and to Laura Chinchilla 
to first discuss his desire to step down from the dialogue's presidency, he did so in Michael fashion. He told us that institutions like the dialogue need to have their leadership refreshed and renewed at regular intervals. Otherwise, he said, the institution would become more a reflection of its leaders and not its leaders a reflection of the institution. Laura and I convinced him to stay longer in order to help the dialogue navigate the elections in the United States and their aftermath, and to navigate the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic. That he agreed to do so reflected his deep devotion to the dialogue and its staff. But he made clear that even his success in guiding the dialogue through such tough waters would not change his mind. And so we find ourselves here today at Michael's last gala. As we prepare ourselves for an autumn and winter of despedidas, and I'm sure there's going to be a few, President Chichia and I, and many other distinguished members of the dialogue, want to take a moment to thank Michael for his tremendous work. We want to thank him for his dedication, for his strength and courage, for his insight, for his commitment to the values that have defined the dialogue. But we also want to thank him for his human warmth, for his tenderness of spirit, for his friendship, and for his willingness to work closely and carefully with all of us to advance the purposes of the dialogue. Tonight, we have a short tribute video made by a series of personalities who will need no introduction. Afterwards, President Chinchia will, will share her appreciation of Michael. And then, as always, Michael will have the last word. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. And please don't panic. I do not pretend to monopolize the use of this podium, but just to take three more minutes of your time uh, to finalize this very special ceremony, this very special dinner. And I will start this final message in a rather unusual way, apologizing. Three minutes is a very short time to summarize more than a quarter of a century of tireless work at the Inter-American Dialogue. Three minutes is a very short time to express our immense gratitude for your commitment to democracy, Mike, freedom, and peace in the hemisphere. Three minutes is a very short time to wish you farewell and imagine the dialogue without your guidance. Indeed, in the many messages of gratitude from friends and colleagues, your leadership has been continuously recognized as a fundamental quality of your role as president of the dialogue. That leadership is evident not only in the visibility that our organization has in the region and beyond and in the relevance of its agenda, but also in the path that you have paved for others to follow on your steps. You leave behind a wonderful collection of research that will help future generations understand the multiple forces that have shaped the region in the past decades, and that will continue to do so. But more importantly, you leave behind a undeniable commitment to the principles and institutions of democracy that will work as guide and inspiration to many. Never since the transition to democracy in our region has the hemisphere need, needed that guidance and inspiration more. While our democracies and their institutions as are suffering attacks, autocratic and populist leaders feel invigorated. To navigate storms like this present one, we require a clear route and a firm steering hand on you. As a president of the dialogue, we have had both. The Democrats of this region will always be thankful for your democratic compass. And now I would like to invite Tom and Mike 
to come here uh, to the podium, please. And just let me say the last words in Spanish. And please, gentlemen, don't be afraid. <laughs> We have abuse of the presence of women during this ceremony. Y quisiéramos, para finalizar, Mike, en nombre del board de directores del diálogo, entregarte como una muestra de cariño y de aprecio algo que sabemos que ha sido también parte de tu pasión, que es el arte latinoamericano. Este es un tejido producido por una artista peruana, Laura Máximo, y que de alguna manera recoge en ese colorido y en ese entramado de hilos eh, con que ella lo elaboró, de alguna manera recoge también el entramado y el colorido y la enorme diversidad de redes que tú has logrado tejer alrededor del diálogo interamericano. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Well, please, no. Please, 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 please. That's right, that's right. Thank you. Please sit down. 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 I, I, um, I'm, I'm speechless. Um, just incredibly moved and touched, and um, uh, everything that I was going to say that I had prepared, um, I was going to pay tribute to all the people that appeared in these videos um, that I've been so fortunate to work with um, and um, pay tribute to Tom and to Laura, um, extraordinary human beings. But as I was listening to all the tributes, <clears throat> I thought of what my good friend and predecessor, Peter Hakem, was probably thinking when he was hearing it. And, uh, I, was g and I was thinking to myself, I would, at the end, I'd probably go up to him and I would say, Peter, what do you think? And he says, a little over the top, don't you think? <laughs> no es para tanto. No es para tanto. Uh, I'm, sure he's, I'm sure he's thinking that. Um, I, I do want to thank Peter. Peter, um, people have talked about the history of the dialogue. Peter was president for 17 years, as you probably know, uh, what he modestly calls the golden era of the dialogue. Uh, so, and I owe him a lot. I learned from him a lot. Um, he was uh, energetic, creative. Um, I was going to say easy to work with, but I, I, I probably, <laughs> that wouldn't be too credible. But uh, I do want to, I do want to thank Peter for um, believing in me, supporting me um, all the way, and teaching me uh, a lot. Uh, he's been very important, and I do think we need to recognize Abe Lowenthal, who I think more than anybody else really set the concept, defined the concept of the Inter-American Dialogue almost four decades uh, ago, um, as well as Saul Linowitz, of course, who I had the privilege of working with, and, and Peter Bell. Um, Feliciano, I think uh, nobody was more committed to humanitarian human rights issues than Peter Bell, and he was one of the founders as well of the Inter-American Dialogue. So there's, there's a rich history there that I think is important to um, acknowledge. Um, and I'm going to be very, very brief um, because there's not much to say and I am uh, very uh, emotional, but just, just maybe a final reflection. Um, I worked, I started working at the Dialogue when Peter Hakem recruited me um, to head the democracy program just a few months before the first summer of the Americas in 1994, which was hosted by the United States, as we know, and I'll be stepping down a few months before the Ninth Summit of the Americas, hosted by the United States. Um, in the early 1990s, when I started the dialogue, were heady days. The end of the Cold War, the move for military to democratic rule in South America, from war to peace in Central America. 
Um, and just before that summit, the dialogue issued a report, just to have some perspective that was called, the title was Community and Convergence in the Americas. Situation today is far more difficult and complicated. There's less enthusiasm for free trade, as there was back then. There's been democratic backsliding and less willingness to defend democracy where it's being threatened in various places. The hemisphere seems more fragmented than ever, and this polarization in many countries, including the United States, which makes effective governance very problematic. China is a challenge, as, as Tom said, but I hope we won't return to a Cold War mentality, mindset. The promise of the summit 1994 will not be met in the summit of 2022. There are new realities that need to be understood and faced head on. It's tempting and sometimes more comfortable to hear good news all the time, but a real agenda that has some promise of being realized has to go beyond exhortations and sound bites. I believe, firmly believe, it's critical to stay focused on the core values and principles that have underpinned the dialogue's work over nearly four decades. My mentor and a very wise man, Tom knew well, Pete Vakey, always reminded me of Lewis Carroll's quote, if you don't know where you're going, any road would get you there. <laughs> well, the dialogue has a clear purpose and mission and knows where it's going. Everyone associated with this great organization in different ways is striving for a more inclusive, democratic, decent, just, prosperous, and cooperative hemisphere. And in fact, some of the trend lines are possible, as Ambassador pa Power outlined. There have been impressive strides in the protection of human rights and women's participation in business and politics, something that the dialogue act actively pr promoted in the 1994 summit. And clearly, both of our honorees tonight who inspire me no end, Blanca and Feliciano, I think exemplify some of the positive, optimistic things that are happening that need to be recognized and need to be celebrated. And that's why I'm so thrilled to, that we were able to honor both Feliciano and Blanca because I think we need to acknowledge some of the grounds for hope and optimism, people that are doing very innovative and important things and helping others that both of you are doing. So I salute you and I applaud you and I'm so happy that my last gala, uh, I've loved all of our awardees, but I'm so happy that our last gala, uh, we've honored uh, both of you. I think we need to be clear-eyed about the obstacles ahead and smart and strategic about how to address them, but remain undeterred and tenacious in pursuit of our mission. And I have no doubt we can and we will accomplish so much moving forward together. Now, I imagine my mother saying to herself, Michael, enough already. <laughs> People want dessert. Um, wrap it up. So I'll do it. Thank you, Mom. And uh, thanks for coming. And thanks to everybody here for all of your support and generosity and goodwill over many years. And thank you so much for coming out and being here tonight. Thank you very much.